Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to my 2004 Mark I Audi TT, which for the past six months or so I've been using as my daily driver. I've covered around 3,000 miles in it. However, as we're coming into the winter, I feel like it's time to get something a little bit more suitable. You have to remember, unlike most Mark I Audi TTs, this is front wheel drive, it's not a quattro. So it does slide around a little bit and I feel like maybe for this winter as it gets colder, maybe snowy etc i want something that is four wheel drive and, and so it is time to move this car on however before i do so there are a few a, a couple of things in particular that are annoying about this that i think can be solved relatively easily i've not done any maintenance of this car in the time that i've owned it and it's been fantastic it's been bulletproof mechanically this car is so sound but cosmetically and features wise there are a couple of things that we can do to improve it. And by making these improvements, hopefully I'll be able to sell the car for a little bit more money, which will obviously help with the next purchase. So to do this then, I've partnered up with eBay and I'll be using their certified recycled parts page to source the parts that I need for the car. So if you've not heard of eBay certified recycled parts, essentially by using them, you can save up to 70% off the retail price of parts for your car. These are recycled vehicle parts that have been accurately identified, recorded, tested, removed and sold by a vehicle recycler that operates a robust quality management system. So what is it then that my Audi TT actually needs? Well, as I mentioned, there are a couple of things in particular. Number one is the paintwork on this car overall is actually not so bad. There's just a few areas where it's not the best. There's a little bit of lacquer peel on the roof and some sort of piercing or tearing to the paintwork on the rear arch on the passenger side. But most annoyingly is the passenger side wing mirror. Pretty much the entire thing has suffered from lack appeal and it's just completely flat. Now I think it should be relatively easy to replace the entire wing mirror and I've managed to find one on the eBay certified recycled parts page. So we're going to be replacing that. And the second thing then, well, if you've ever had a daily driver that doesn't have this feature, you'd very much know about it. And my Mark I Audi TT does not have any cup holders. But I know that there are some that do, which to me tells me that there were a factory option, which my car just wasn't specified with. I've managed to find a part which is the OEM cup holders for this car. And again, that should be super, super simple to fit to my car. And it's just a great selling point then when I do move the car on. The paintwork's gonna just look better overall with that wing mirror also popping like the driver's side one and cup holders in the car, which is a massive bonus. So I think we'll start with what's probably gonna be the trickier of the two dobs first, which is this very, very dull and flat passenger side wing mirror. Hopefully this won't be too difficult to do. I can just do it with some basic tools on my driveway, which is great too. And here is the replacement, which I managed to get delivered next day, which is an extra bonus. And this is it. And already, as you can see, it's just in such much better condition than the one I've got on the car. This one, totally flat. It's got no color to it. All of the paintwork has peeled or the lacquer has peeled. This one is complete. A little bit dirty, but we can give it a clean up before we put it on the car. And yeah, like I say, overall, this is just gonna make such a difference to that front end appearance. So to replace the wing mirror on a Mark I Audi TT is a multi-step process. First, we have to remove the mirror glass because that will reveal some connectors behind which we need to unclip to then pull the base of the mirror up from the car. There's four little clips that hold the mirror glass to the mirror which you can prise out with ideally a plastic trim remover tool very gently as to not damage the glass. I was a little bit meat fisted here using a metal flathead screwdriver because I had new glass with the new wing mirror. Once the glass has come away from the mirror then there's these two little connectors which are for the heating element of the glass which you can pop out. The next step then is to remove this u-shaped metal fastener which is what actually secures the mirror itself to the strut that holds it to the car. First, you have to pull up this retainer clip out of the way and then using some pliers or something you can get a good grip on, giving it a good yank on the U-shaped piece of metal to pull it away. In this case, I had to use some pliers and a little bit of lubrication to get it free. <sighs> Yay. The last thing to do then is to unclip these wires which relate to the actual mirror movement itself, which you control from the car. So there we go, we've got the old mirror casing off. A little bit of a fiddly job. I think you probably saw that I managed to break the glass, 
but it's okay because the mirror that I've received from eBay has new glass with it. Um, so we don't have to worry too much. What I'm hoping for is that the inside of the new mirror just looks like this, so it all matches up, but it should be fine. Um, yeah, bit of fiddly job, but once you know how, it's relatively easy. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend following exactly how I do it and also using metal tools to try and prise things off. That's always obviously a bad idea, um, but I just did what I had to, to to get it off. And so, yeah, essentially reverse the, the procedure and we'll have our new mirror. But just a minute, I was forgetting at this point that before I fit the new mirror, I needed to remove the existing pylon that was attached to the car. This is actually really simple to do. It's literally just two T30 bolts, which you unscrew and then it all comes up over the wires. Right, so now the old mirror is fully out and I think I'm just gonna give the new one a little bit of a clean before we go ahead and fit it. Like I said, I'm really impressed with the condition of this. It uh, is gonna look so, so good on the car. So perhaps the most difficult part of this entire process is actually removing the glass from the mirror. As you saw the first time round, I broke it, but this time I really didn't want that to happen because this was the only glass that I had left. You've just got to be super gentle, feel the clips and lightly break them away. And so I'd be able to fit the new mirror to the car. I had to then remove those components like that metal U-clip from the new mirror so that it would go on and I could do that all in reverse. So now it is a case of fitting the new pylon to the car and securing it with the 30mm Torx bolts. Although I thought actually at this point before securing it down, it would make sense to give the area around that pylon a really good clean. Once I'd done this, I secured the 30mm Torx bolts and then added the actual mirror, making sure to thread those wires up through the correct hole. Once I'd done this, I repositioned that U-shaped metal fastener into place. It needed a little bit of hammering, and then I pushed down hard on that metal retainer clip over the top. Lastly, I just had to reconnect the two plugs that go together, which allow the mirror to move from the controller in the car. And then before attaching the glass back to the mirror, putting back in those two connectors for the heating element of the glass. Then it was a simple case of securing the glass back onto the mirror and clipping it in all nicely. You'll be pleased to know that this was much easier than taking it off. Okay, so that mirror is done. Just gonna give it a final wipe down. Really been happy with that. It was a bit of a complicated process, but like I say earlier, I think now I know what I'm doing, I'd be able to do the other side quite easily if I had to, but we don't need to because the other side looks great. Now this side looks great. No lack of peel on this mirror. So the front end of the car now just looks so much more fabulous because that was one of the first things for me I always noticed was just how yeah, just let the car down. So really happy with that. And uh, I'm really excited now to put the cup holders in the car because that is something I'm going to enjoy using whilst I still have it for sure. Before we move on to the cup holders, I realise we should just check that our handiwork on the mirror has, has worked. So these are electric mirrors. There's an adjustment on here. Uh, if I turn this dial to the left, it should adjust the glass, which it is doing. Fantastic. Okay, so we're in the TT then, and as I mentioned earlier, my one has a particular absence of cup holders. And I think cup holders are an essential in any car, let alone a car that you're using on a daily basis. I love to have coffees and, and stuff as I drive along, so, it's always annoying when I don't have one. And like I said, I've been using this as my daily drive for the last six months without cup holders. I can't believe anyone would be so cheap at specifying a car that they leave the cup holders out. But anyway, what I've researched is that in these cars, it was an option. And in fact, they, they're in a bit of a weird place, but they go here. There's this little piece of plastic trim between the seats, sort of closer to the rear seats in the front. And this is where the cup holders were. So I went onto the eBay certified recycled parts page and sure enough, found some cup holders and here we have them. <laughs> They're really stylish actually. I really like the way they look, sort of this aluminium finish where the cups go. Um, but also most importantly, I've noticed this arched piece of plastic, which clearly looks identical to the piece of plastic we've got here in place of where these cup holders are meant to go. 
So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a really simple job of just pulling up the old plastic piece of trim and replacing it with these. But yeah, it's gonna be so good actually to finally be able to put down my hot coffee as I'm driving along. So unlike the last job with the wing mirror, I'm pretty sure I can probably just do this with one hand. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that was extremely easy. That has just come straight off. And there you go, it looks pretty much identical, it does, doesn't it, to that piece on the cup holders. So what I'm gonna do then, again with one hand, let's see if I can do this, is just clip this into place. Yeah, there you go. That's brilliant. And I haven't actually got anything to, to practice it with. Let's just pretend that that's a cup. Yeah, it goes in. You've got these little bits here for, for larger cups and that's it so there we go then i've now got cup holders in my tt and like i mentioned it i didn't see many on the classifieds with cup holders so it seemed to be quite a rare option so this is now certainly going to make it easier to sell this car and definitely add a bit of value to it as well i know i'd rather go for a car with cup holders than without but knowing how easy it is next time i have a mark on tt i'm going to make sure i definitely definitely do this i wonder if it's a little bit of an awkward position these cup holders but i'm actually sit sat a little bit further back than what I'd, I'd normally sit but still better than no cup holders that's for sure so there we have it then two relatively small jobs done in less than an afternoon and i think the car is now much better for it i'm really happy that the passenger side wing mirror went on okay it matches now the driver's side one which is immaculate and those cup holders how brilliant was that I've, I've done cup holders to other cars and that one was extremely simple literally popping off a piece of plastic trim and replacing it with the cup holder part very very simple to do and definitely actually something you guys should do if you are mark one tt owners but with that this is now going to go up for sale and i'm going to be looking for my winter replacement to this car so do stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in seeing what i end up with i think i've already decided but i'll let you guys wait and see and big shout out to eBay for sponsoring this video and, and making it possible. It's much, much appreciated, but I hope you guys have enjoyed watching along and I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Try eBay's certified recycle parts and save up to 70% on RRP. Same parts, just better for the planet and your pocket.